Hi everyone, so in this video we are looking at the idea of what resting potential is uh, and we'll also just touch on how that differs from um, states of depolarization and an action potential. Okay, so first of all, what is a resting potential? Well, when we're talking about resting potential, we're talking about what's happening in the neurons or the nerve cells. So resting potential is something which is important when we think about the membranes, okay? So it's looking at the membranes. Now, this whole area here is the membrane, um, but if we just think about the axon of the neuron and we sort of zoom in on what's going on there, then that's going to be a little bit simpler. But this could be anywhere, any part of the nerve cell. Um, and what we've got here, we've got a situation where out here, so this is outside the neuron, this is the neuron, okay, so in this diagram this represents one of the cell surface membranes, this represents a cell surface membrane on the other side, um, and this again is outside the neuron. So when we are in a situation where the neuron, or this part of the membrane of the neuron is at resting potential, the outside is more positive and the inside is more negative. And because we've got a difference of charge, which is minus 70 millivolts, this is what we call a potential difference. So it's a voltage. So this is why when we're talking about nerve impulses, we often uh, think of it in terms of an electrical impulse, because we're talking about charge and we're talking about a voltage. So minus 70 millivolts is the difference in the uh, sort of relative positive and negative charges inside the neuron compared to outside. And because it's more negative inside, it has a negative sign. It's really important to understand that just because it says negatives here, that's not because we have negative ions there only and positive ions here. The positive and the negative signs here just tell us the relative difference. So it's more positive on the outside and more negative on the inside. You could say it's more positive on the outside and it's less positive on the inside. It's a relative idea. So at resting potential, the difference in the uh, charges on either side of that membrane is minus 70 millivolts. So these, this charge is also it's to do with the ions that are present. Now those ions can move, and we'll look, about, look at how that works in another video. Um, but what we want to look at next is something called depolarization. So depolarization happens um, as a result of some kind of stimulus. And when that happens, we see a change in the potential difference or the voltage. So as you can see, we've gone from minus 70 to now minus 60. It doesn't have to be minus 60, but the point is that depolarization happens, the difference in the charge becomes more positive, so it moves towards the positive side. So it's a bit like saying that maybe there aren't as many positive uh, charges on the outside compared to the inside. So we still have positive relatively on the outside and relatively more negative on the inside, but the difference is not quite as great. Now the next thing is something called an action potential. So an action potential is where we get a sudden change and we get to a difference of plus 30 millivolts. So because we've now got positive number here, that means that the inside is more positive than the outside. So we need to change our signs here. So during an action potential, the relative charge on each side of the membrane would look like this more positive on the inside of the neuron and more negative or less positive on the outside of the neuron. And this number, plus 30, it, sometimes it's given as plus 30, sometimes as plus 40, but this number is the potential difference that is reached at the peak of an action potential. So what we need to look at now is how that resting potential is maintained. So in this diagram, we've, we're looking slightly differently now. So this time, this whole thing here, this is the cell surface membrane. 
So now this is outside the cell and this is the cytoplasm inside. So you can only see the cell surface membrane on one side of the neuron at the moment, which is here. In that cell surface membrane, we know that there are lots of proteins embedded. So this protein here is actually a sodium potassium pump. So it's a, uh, it's a carrier protein. Um, and so what this does is it takes three sodium ions out for every two potassium ions that it takes in. So this is doing active transport. Um, what this does is it means that we have lots of positive charges and these are all representing sodium ions on the outside of the neuron. And it means we also have lots of positive charges inside. These represent potassium ions. But because we have three and two, as you can see from the diagram, we have more positive charge outside compared to inside. Now, this isn't all that's happening, but if it was, you can see already that we've got a potential difference. So we've already got more positive charges here. So this would be relatively positive, And inside is relatively negative. Even though it's all positive charges, there aren't as many of them inside as outside. So this is contributing already to our resting potential where the inside is more negative, but there's more to the story than that. We've also got channel proteins. So here, this channel protein is a potassium channel protein. So there we go. We have a few potassium ions moving through the channel protein. Okay? And the reason they're moving this way is because we have a potassium ion concentration gradient. High concentration inside, lower concentration outside. And we have lots of these channels. So here's another potassium channel. And more potassium ions move through from inside to outside. And here's another one. And more potassium moves from inside to outside. So you can see that what's happened is that we've um, increased that potential difference even more. We've now got an even greater number of positive charges outside compared to inside. So it's making that potential difference um, even greater. Um, but what we also have is we also have sodium channels. So this sodium channel here uh, we can see that sodium, we've got a very high concentration outside, and at the moment we've actually got no sodium ions inside, so of course sodium ions are going to move down from out to in. Now, whereas we have lots of potassium channels, there are hardly any of these. Uh, the difference here we can see sort of like a th 1, 2, 3 to 1 ratio. It would be much more than that. There would be far, far more uh, potassium channels than sodium channels. So what that means is the membrane is almost impermeable to sodium ions, apart from what happens in this sodium-potassium pump. So what that means is, although some sodium ions come inside, almost all of the ions that move are moving from inside to outside. The only other thing that also happens is that we've got some negative ions inside the neuron. So these could be anything, any, any negative ions or even molecules of negative charge that you might have inside the cell. So inside the cell, we've got a slightly negative charge. Outside the cell, we have a positive charge. So what we have is we have an electrochemical gradient, positive and negative. So the ions, and it could be either sodium or potassium, more likely potassium because there are more channels, some of these potassium ions also move from outside and they come inside, down the electrochemical gradient. These channels are not one direction channels. It just depends on the gradient. Ions can go one way or they can go the other way. Okay, so the result of all of this, we've got the sodium potassium pump, Potassium ions moving out down their concentration gradient, a few sodiums moving in down their concentration gradient, and potassium ions moving in down the electrochemical gradient. All of this balances out at a difference in charge of minus 70 millivolts. And that, all of this, 
is how that resting potential is maintained. Oh, there's the potassium going the other way. Okay, that's it. Thank you very much.